Hello and welcome to another episode of Model Railroading 101. I'm John, and as usual, I'm in front of the camera, and I have a special guest behind the camera. Oh yeah, it's just me, uh, George Lucas. So today I want to talk to you about adding weight to your rolling stock. This issue was touched on in another episode of Model Railroading 101 about standards a while back, but we didn't really say too much about how to do it. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this episode. The NMRA provides what they call standards, and they provide something else called recommended practices. While standards are intended to be followed rigidly, recommended practices are more of a guideline for better operation. Weight is one of these, a recommended practice, coming from the NMRA, and it can be found on their website or using an online search that references NMRA Table RP-20.1. I recognize the golden rule of model railroading. It's my layout and I'll do what I want. And I'm not trying to persuade anyone to do anything different in this program. I'm simply providing information that you might find helpful if you aren't already applying some kind of standard to your fleet of rolling stock. It's also worth noting that there are advanced modelers who have come up with their own approach for calculating weight. And that's okay too. This is model railroading 101. So it's intended to inform beginners about the things that they might not already be aware of. Some rolling stock comes out of the box at the recommended weight, and some comes out of the box heavier than the recommended weight. It's good to be spot on or a little over the NMRA recommended weight. So this information is being provided with the assumption that we're talking about adding weight to underweight rolling stock. Thus the title, adding weight to rolling stock. So why add weight? Applying the recommended practice consistently ensures that your models will perform better. It also ensures that if you interchange your equipment with other modelers, you can all have confidence that what you're sharing will work the same as what you already have. This can be a big deal if you operate on a club layout or take your equipment to your friend's layout to operate. Better tracking. Properly weighted cars act more like the real thing. Have you ever seen a model train rolling down the track with a consist that looks like an inchworm constantly pulling the slack in and out between cars? Now, have you ever seen a real train do that? Forget about how out of place it would look and just imagine the horrendous noise it would make as cars constantly clang together and apart as the train rumbles down the line. Seems pretty absurd, doesn't it? Something else to consider is this. What if you have a train with some lightweight cars near the front and some heavy cars toward the end? Now imagine you're traveling on a stretch of curved track and on a slight grade. What do you think will happen? The light cars are likely to get pulled off the tracks, creating a derailment. That does not happen with rolling stock that's properly weighted. Some people may think lighter cars are better because you can pull a longer train if it doesn't weigh as much. True, but you'll also get the inchworm effect. I don't know about you, but I like heavy trains better anyway. They look more realistic to me. And besides that, it's a great excuse to add more power, okay? <laughs> Putting more locomotives on because heavy trains require more power to pull, and nothing looks better to me than a train with a big power lash up pulling a heavy string of cars, just like the real thing. Let's talk about some approaches to adding weight. It would not be practical to talk about every single example that the hobby provides us with, especially considering the wide range of rolling stock models that are available out there in the marketplace. So I'm gonna talk about some of the more common models and show you a few examples of how you can add weight to them. The first category we're gonna talk about would be enclosed cars. Enclosed rolling stock can almost always be disassembled. Then you can add weight using your favorite method once it's apart. Just remember to place all the parts on the scale when you're performing the upgrade. Some examples would include boxcars, uh, caboose, auto racks, covered hoppers, passenger cars, and tank cars. Let's talk about open cars. Open cars are most easily made heavier by adding a load. 
In open hoppers and gondolas, you can hide weights under a rock or a coal load, for example. You can get pretty creative with open car loads. Some examples again would be gondolas, open hoppers, flat cars, well cars. Uh, one thing about well cars is you would want to add weight only to the bottom container. And if you're going to mix containers, keep track of which ones are weighted so that your load doesn't end up being top heavy. So what should you use to add weight? I want to talk about tank cars first because they're probably the hardest ones to add weight to. These N-scale tank cars are kits from Roundhouse. The weights came with them and were installed during assembly. In a lot of cases, you can't take it apart without having to do major surgery on it afterwards. If you have a tank car that can't be taken apart, or you're hesitant to try it because you don't want to damage it, some people have suggested drilling a small hole in an inconspicuous place on the bottom and then pouring sand in until it's at the desired weight. This ensures that the weight stays toward the bottom of the car when you turn it back over, and since the hole is on the bottom, it's easier to conceal it when you plug it back up. I mentioned using loads for open cars like flat cars a minute ago, but what about other cars that allow you to conceal weights? Here are a few possibilities. You can buy stick-on weights like these for balancing motorcycle wheels. They come in quarter ounce segments. You can also buy stick-on weights from hobby shops but they tend to be expensive when compared with the other alternatives. How about fishing weights? Some people use a hammer to crush fishing weights so that they have a flat side to glue to the floor of a car. You may already have fishing weights around your house, if you like to fish. I'd find and use the ones in the bottom of the tackle box that I never use when I'm out fishing. Nuts, bolts, and washers can also be used. These can be purchased in bulk in varying sizes. Add that to the fact that they're useful around the house and you have an excellent option. If you're like me, you probably have some of these just sitting around the house already. How about pennies? I've heard many modelers say this is the cheapest way to add weight, and I believe it. Unfortunately, it may require cutting the pennies, in case you need to fit them into small cars, or don't need the whole penny to get to the weight you want. Be creative. I'm sure you can think of something else to use. Shoot, come to think of it, if I forgot something, put a comment in the comment section below and let everybody know what you use. Distribution of the weight should always be over the wheel sets and toward the bottom, like in the example of the well car I talked about a minute ago. What do I need to do all this? Just like most everything else in this hobby, there are many ways to accomplish this task. If you have the recommended weights memorized, you have a lot more brain power than I do, and I take my hat off to you. For the rest of us, here are three easy ways to get it done. I'm going to demonstrate all three using a stopwatch to make a point later. Okay, so I have everything I need for the first demonstration. I have my NMRA table that has all the weights on it for the various scales here. I have my ruler to measure the car, and I have my calculator to make the calculation. So I want to mention just real quickly, I realize that this is not a race, but the reason I'm showing you how long things take is to make the point because not everybody has all day to model. I mean, I understand you're enjoying your hobby and so forth, but say you only have a half hour or 20 minutes a day to do this, what I'm about to show you could make the difference between getting five cars done or 10, for example, depending how fast you work. So that's the point of the stopwatch. So start the watch now. I'm gonna measure the car. It's about four inches. So I go over here to my end scale and it says, 0.15 per inch. So I got four times 0.15. And then you're supposed to add a, a half an ounce as the starting weight. So I add plus 0.5. And there's our answer, 1.1. Okay, so at this point, I would go and get my scale and figure out how much it weighs and add weight and so forth. And it took about 30 seconds. Then there's John's Easy Weight Calculator. This is an app that I created because I was working with someone who did things the way I just described. I always thought it was a very inefficient use of time. One day when we were filming, I had the idea and said, hey, there should be an app for this. The app lets you enter the length of the car, then it does the calculation for you in two scales. I'll show you how it works in a second, but before I do, 
I want you to know that this is not a simple and shameless act of self-promotion, because I'm going to show you something even better after this demonstration. Okay, for the second test, I got rid of my table because I don't need it. I'm going to use John's easy weight calculator. And to give you an idea of how this works, I'll just show you real quick. The easy weight calculator allows you to just measure your car and then you enter the number of inches right here and it tells you the correct weight for HO scale here and the correct weight for N scale here. And I wouldn't be me if I didn't tell you that you can get this app on the Apple Store. It's only for Apple uh, products right now, but if I sell enough of these, I'm going to develop it for Android as well. So let's give this a shot and I'm going to do it the same way. That way the time example is, you know, pretty fair. So start the watch now. Okay. Looks like it's about four inches. So I go over here, I enter four. That's it. 1.1 ounces. See, pretty quick, pretty easy, right? So as long as you're using HO or N scale, this cut your time down to one third of what it was the first time or close to one third. Pretty good improvement. And now for the secret trick to end all tricks. This is a piece of paper and I've drawn two lines on it. This line is for N scale and at each inch I did these calculations one time so I could write them down here. And the idea here is you can place your rolling stock right on the paper and you know how much it should weigh. Start the clock, stop the clock, 1.1 ounces. It's just that simple. And you could laminate this, hang it in your shop, whatever you want to do. What I've done here is I have N scale on this side and HO scale on this side. And I can't think of a faster way to do this. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could put other marks here and be more precise with it. But, you know, honestly, if I put a car on here and it's between 0.95 and 1.1, I'm okay just saying, okay, it should be an ounce or barely over an ounce or whatever. I mean, you don't have to be totally precise with this stuff. You could even round up if you want to do slightly overweight cars like I suggested before. So that's a really great trick. And again, I wish I could remember who told me so I could give the proper credit. Something tells me the trick's been around for a while and I'm just impressed because I never heard it before. So just a quick review here. We had the traditional way that required three different pieces of stuff, components, and it took about 27 seconds. Then we improved it down to 10 seconds using my easy weight calculator. And that also eliminated one of the things that we needed. We got it down to just the ruler and the device. And then the template was the easiest and fastest way. Took just over a second and you only need one thing for that. And it doesn't even need to be plugged in. I want to also insert a little personal perspective here because I think it's worth mentioning right now. This trick is something I'm sure I would have eventually come up with on my own, but I didn't have to, and that's the point. All right, so let's take this from the beginning through to the end, just to give you a full example of how I would do this. So the first thing, I would take this car and put it on my template. Looks like it's just under 1.1, but more than 0.95. So then I put it on my scale. And it is at 0.7. I'm just going to add these little weights here until I have enough. Oh, look at that. Each one of these is about a tenth of an ounce. Oh, that's enough. So I'm going to use three nuts. Just want to point out, in case you didn't notice, I have the car on the scale while I'm adding my weight. That way I know once it's all done, that's going to be the total that everything weighs all together. I would also point out that if you wanted to be ultra precise, you could get little washers or other little pieces of metal and 
take one of these nuts off and add it until you get to, you know, one even or 0.99. <laughs> it's up to you how precise you want to be. This is good enough for me for now. So to get the car apart, I'm going to... And you know, this is just one car. There's every different car may have a different way that it comes apart. So got everything apart and I want to place my weights over the wheels. But since I have an odd number of weights and look, there already is a weight in this car. It's just obviously not enough. But since I have uh, three, I'm going to try to distribute them evenly like this and I need to figure out what I want to stick them down with uh, you could use hot glue if you want you could probably get away with using CA if you have a thick CA I think what I'm gonna do just because it's convenient right here is use double-sided tape so I'm gonna get just three little pieces of double-sided tape cut out and We'll stick them down and put the cover back on. And so I have one, two, three nuts on the car now. And the idea here is the double-sided tape won't let them come loose. Because you don't want these to come loose after the car is put back together. Although this car was so easy to take apart, it's no big deal. But I'm going to put this back on now. And... snaps back together there and then just to make sure it's all good 1.1 so it's a little overweight you know I think I would default to going a little over instead of a little under I would rather have it track a little heavier and add a locomotive or two or three <laughs> or four if I have them <laughs> I like those long heavy trains they just look cool to me at the end of the day, applying this recommended practice to your model railroad is entirely up to you. All I will say is that if you don't use the NMRA recommendations for weight, have some standard that you can apply consistently to your trains for consistent and predictable operations. So what do you think? Did I forget to mention something? Is this whole topic a waste of time? Do you have a better idea? Let us know by placing a comment below in the comment section of this video. If you find this content useful or entertaining, please let me know by clicking the thumbs up button. If you want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and make it a great day.